this topic has been uh, going to be an interesting one. All right, so we are going to learn a lot tonight by the grace of God. All right, so uh, we got my friend here, Madam Ek. That's what I call her, right, Madam Ek. That's the name I call her. So uh, I cannot remember the time we got to meet. Now. I think it was I don't know six years or okay, no, more than six years ago. I don't know. Yeah, how many years ago? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in the tens of years now. Yes, yes. Because it's a long time back. <laughs> yeah, it's a long, time. a long time. All right. So, but, uh, but it's, been a, it's, a, it's been a very interesting journey. That's right. That's right. Uh, I'm so glad to have to have known you, and I'm glad for all the things that you have done. You know, the relationship over the years. Um, so, I just want to. I think I'm not sure. I don't think you are. Um. Um. Uh, um was the right word to use and i don't think you are like a visitor like that to, to the group here you know um so no i've good. attended several of your events so. yeah but it's good to just give some background information about you know your work and uh, so that you know, as we go through this uh, people can uh kind of see the authority that from where you're coming from and then we can talk about this so um uh miss ekanem robertson is uh the person that is going to be our guest tonight, uh, she's got a, a burning desire to inspire. So, Miss Robertson is driven. I call her EK. All right. So tonight, you might just hear me just EK, EK, EK. All right. That's what I call her. Okay. Uh, she's got a she's got a burning desire to inspire and educate others about diverse range of issues. Um, she has over a variety of she has she has over a variety of media outlets where she's hosted talks, uh, talk show, and also run her own. A talk show some years back um i believe when i was actually coming out with the lighthouse i've, I've spoken on that show before about the gospel which was very good you had a lot of conversations on that on that show uh some sort of some questions that you know people don't like to talk about you know so i think that is one of the things that she's really not afraid about talking about those things and that's the reason why i think our talk tonight will be a blessing to us our work really focuses more around the uh, bame community uh so she's not afraid to ask the tough questions all right so hopefully she's not going to put me on the spot tonight but yeah and uh, she's bold and, and powerful she maintains a great sense of humor so uh miss robertson i've like i've said before i've known her for many years uh we've done some work together um in our in our in our business and i'm just so glad that um she remains consistent as somebody that can that always add value to people um i focus really around recent work has been around um she's working as a trustee with a company called africa africa safeguarding children i think the reason why this topic is quite important is because you know we need to be able to uh, help our children and also for for parents to know what to do about these things all right so uh she has been working with africa um a charity company in the uk since 2013 all right so that's um just 10 years ago all right so our current work now deals with preventative work in global communities that are migrating to the UK. So you have people coming from different parts of the world, coming to the UK, the culture is different. How do you help those people uh, to, to ensure that they can integrate properly uh, you know, into the community? But tonight we're going to be talking about you know, sex education, especially for our children. Um, Ms. Robertson is a lawyer as well. So in case you know, she starts giving you some, quoting some uh, uh, legalese, <laughs> so I know where that is coming from. So we're so happy to have you here, uh, Mr. Robertson. Thank you so much for being, uh, for honoring the invitation to show up here. I'm so glad to be here. Obviously, you've been talking to Tama. Tama has been the one that helps to, you know, yes. reach out to the guests and arrange, make sure everything works well. So um, so thank you very much. So the way it works usually is um, we ask the question, you give the opportunity to share what you've got. Uh, Tama sort of kind of guides the conversation throughout the, throughout the uh, this the uh, the show, and then there are people that will be sending some chat as well in the group that might have questions to ask, and then you can is, is just uh, respond to them as it were. So uh, Tama will be looking at those questions and be calling them out as we go through through this. All right, do you do you have Thank any you. more what to share for my people before we start rolling? Um, I've sent some things over to Tama, but um. I don't think I need them to be shared yet. I think I, I sent you a video. Yeah. Tama. Yes. Yes. yes you yeah. Said, yeah. We, we will yes. do that later. We will do that later. That that forms part of the conversation, quite an important part of it. Um, shall I just start now and go yes. ahead? Yes, let's go. Let's okay. do it. We've got an hour, right? All so, right. 
All right. Well, um, <laughs> um, good evening, everyone that's that's here on this platform. And, you know, one of the things I always do is wherever I go and I speak, whether it's on Zoom or whatever, I give honor to whom honor is due. And right now I give honor to God that I can be here to be able to speak to you and hopefully you know, with his guidance, this subject, which is a sensitive subject, to say the least, I will handle it in a way that we will all appreciate and will not go uh, beyond what it should be. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm not using a lot of videos. But the one I have, I think, Tamar, you may have vetted it and uh, seen that it is very appropriate. Yes, thank yeah. you. Um, and so um, I welcome you all here. My specialty is actually in safeguarding and child abuse. And to be honest with you, you cannot talk about um, sex education, which is what we're dealing with today, without talking about abuses. So we're going to see both sides of the coin. The other way that I operate, as um, uh, Davis knows, is that I like to communicate with the people here. It's a subject, and, and I have a reason for wanting to make sure that all of you will communicate with me. Um, so can I just ask you, Taima, are, they a, are people able to put up their hands and things like that? Yes, they are. They, are. they can just um, show their Indica. e hand. Okay, that, that would be great. If I could have that facility, I'd be really pleased. Are they able to talk at all? Do you yes. allow that? All right. Yeah. We may have a little bit and I will stay within the barn. So if you feel something that I'm asking to be done shouldn't be done, just say so, but not on this occasion. And that's fine. So um, what I want to say is that um, for those of you who are living in the UK, we um, have I have to give a kind of trigger warning and say that I will ask questions um, some very interesting ones. Um, and I would ask that you imagine that you actually take part, answer those questions, but answer them in such a way that, you know, we're not saying it's you. It could be a friend you're, you're relating to. So see it like that. Okay. So feel free to be honest with your answers because I need honesty. I need us to trust each other within this platform. There are not too many of us here. And I don't know whether this is spread across the world in any way. Is it a closed? Yeah. So is it a closed? So normally we share the rec recording um, after okay. the session. I'll put it on YouTube for replay. But people won't see this, what I'm seeing, where I'm seeing all the names, will they? No, no, no. People don't see the names. Okay. Then that's that's fine. Then we're we're good to go. So let's treat ourselves as a little family and be free to talk about these subjects. So I want to approach it differently, um, in the sense that normally you probably have a speaker who just talk and then maybe ask questions at the end. Feel free to jump in and put your questions through so that we can have a lively conversation. Now, some of the things that we may talk about may bring up memories of things that have maybe happened to you that you haven't even talked to anybody about, or you may know of other people who have gone through certain things. Um, please feel free to just hold on to those or share them if you wish to, but just be aware that that may happen. Because I remember having a conversation like this and things that I had forgotten came to my mind. And that's why I'm just putting out this, this warning to you all. I will ask deep questions. Not all of them are for you to give your own personal answer or hear on this platform, but I want you to have those questions so that you can talk to yourself. And it's important that you do so because really at the end of the day, what you're gathering here is what you're going to apply to your children because this is what that question, if I remember it correctly, was about. Um, and the question was, how do I talk sexual education with my children and get them to open up um, to give um, to uh, open up to me regarding uh, uh, inappropriate advances from uh, adults do I teach them about safe sex or abstinence um, and what is um, the middle ground that is the question that we will answer today so let me ask you all, 
a few a few a few questions and the questions are by a show of hands do we have married people on this platform right now that's one question quick answer any more married people i don't see any e hands going up so so you're the only married person here davis okay do we have single people here any hands going up tema i'm not seeing them nobody's talking to me okay my e hand is up <laughs> and you're a single person as well davis no 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 <laughs> okay no, all but, right no, I'm not. <laughs> so we only have two single people here and all the rest i don't think so many people are just people just don't know how to use their e hands i think that's what's happening right now okay all right um, to use your e hands just go to the emoji button and then when you click on it you're just going to see raise hand or lower hand that's how to use it e okay i was also going to well, i i think to speed things up i wanted to ask what age people were whether they were over 25 over 40 over 50 um and then i wanted to find out how many people had children what age bands were these children because what you say to your child will depend very much on their age band as you understand the way that you will explain something to a child is very different from the way that you would explain it to an older child and especially the areas in which these children um uh, will be going into will be totally different as well I wanted to ask as well if people could tell me maybe they could write it down in the chat box and you can let me know Tema give me words that de described how you were brought up when you were a child throw words at me I just need to know how you feel about the way you were brought up when you were growing up and it will also inform the kind of way you relate to things around you so perhaps um davis you can you davis and tamar you could be my candidates here because i'm not seeing people okay uh yes thank you loving environment fantastic another one please davis do you want oh, to oh, say oh, yeah 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 so it's a, it's a, it's a uh, question so anybody yeah, yeah. tamar because i can so, see so, you it's easy, so, easy to relate yeah, so, so maybe you can answer on behalf of people let's keep, keep this thing going so give me a word that describe many words just so it could be angry whatever good bad just say it let's uh, okay. see i would say playful playful environment playful playful environment yeah. what else yeah. is, is that the truth so it was always playful No, not always playful not always playful I i'm talking about the way in which your parents brought you up oh my parent okay let's see um my so here's the thing <laughs> mine is a bit um tricky i can't give a straightforward answer because my my mom was in school uh, while she had us so she was mostly away so it was our dad and a lot of cousins we had a lot of cousins in the house so um what, what was your was really playful. like It, it was, okay so it's playful that way yeah it was click okay it was jane i see you coming up jane Give is the one environment jane said loving environment loving environment okay and yeah. that's it you people were brought up in perfect places because whenever oh, i no. ask this question oh, people no, said to no. me discipline um it was tough they were beaten so you people i i, I think i should just come off this because you know you you're too perfect they got they got the grace of god walking for them all right so seriously seriously so, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> that's so, why i so, said i can't really give a straightforward answer because see my mom was in school most of the time so yes there was a lot of aspect you shall and so was mine too <laughs> any more i want some honesty i want honesty here because mine was tough My mm. father's first second and last name would have been discipline discipline discipline. Mm. And this was in this country. So I was I I received a good beating if I didn't do things right. And I you know that was what happened. Yeah. But it brought up the person you see now and it informed my behavior. Okay. Let's move on to the way in which you had you were introduced to sex or that subject matter. definitely not in the house okay. not in the home N not in the home you were not told you say no it was not okay, a, so it was, it was not yeah it wasn't it wasn't discussed now 
Yeah, me neither. It wasn't, Thank you. Honesty then. It wasn't discussed. Yeah, it, it wasn't, wasn't discussed. discussed. Yeah. You kind of, was, you kind of, you kind okay. of figure, it out, and, figure it out along the way, you know. But yeah, it was not discussed. Like, sit, sit down around the table and say, hey, by the way, hey, dude, this is how to do it. You know, <laughs> nobody ever said nobody ever said that to me when I was growing up. Okay. You know, what I say to people is that till today, I do not know anything about sex. And the reason is because, you know, you were always told that your parents would tell you about it. Am I right? <laughs> My mom just always told me, don't play with the opposite sex. You, like you. Simple as that. <laughs> no, you, 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 did, you didn't even have to play with them. You, didn't, you were not allowed to hold their hand. You're not allowed to let them stand near you. And especially worse is by the time you were have menstruating, oh dear, that was the end of the world. Now you are going to definitely go off the rails. And there was this impression that if you talk to your child about sex, they'll be doing it the next day. Mm. Um, so as I was saying to you, I had no, um, nobody taught me about it. My parents who should have been the people to tell me about it did not tell me about it till they passed away so i don't have any knowledge about it from them and I, I will honestly put up my hand yes sir that's a question though so mm -hmm. um, do you think that um do you think they didn't talk about it because they were they were uncomfortable about it or because they didn't know any better does that make sense Yes, it does. Okay. And and you are absolutely right. There are several things here in what you have just said here. And it is reflected by how I started this conversation with all of you. I simply asked you, you know, what your, you know, were you beaten? Were you this? Were you that? Had anybody said anything? Do you understand? Nobody likes to talk about themselves. Nobody likes to be honest because it's as if by saying I was beaten or something terrible happened to me, that's the end of me. Your the way you look at me has changed, or um, it's embarrassing, or it's a shame. All those things come into it. So your parents, one, they would not have been told how things were done mm -hmm. by anybody as well. Two, they may not have even known properly, because a lot of people do go into marriage totally askance, mm. especially when you're, you have never had the experience. And I'm not saying in that statement that you should go and get experience. I'm just saying not knowing something and not knowing what you don't know. You don't know what to expect. You walk into this marriage. Both parties may not even know what to do. Mm. I heard a, a joke once. It, well, it came out like a joke. Uh, an uh, Irish people, a lady and a man got married went home from the marriage and, you know, 10 years later, they were coming and saying that they, they're not having any children. And uh, the part, the priest said to them, you don't have any children. What, what are you doing? And he therefore, in the process of talking to them, I'm sorry, when they went to the doctor, not the priest, they've discovered that the pair knew nothing about sex. They had never been told they had been, they were both um, abstinent, you know, operating on abstinence. They didn't know what to do. So they did nothing. So therefore they could not produce any children. And a lot of marriages can actually be like that. It sounds crazy in this world today, but it is very possible. The negative part of that not knowing is that you can subject one or you know, either party to abuse because the person who knows more will inflict things on the person that doesn't know anything. It was once when I first joined Facebook, somebody inboxed me because of the show that I used to do and said to me that they were Asian and they wanted to know um, whether it was right to do a certain act in the bedroom and i said to them well it is if that is what you want to do however it is not what i would advise because of the ramifications 
of that act. I won't go into detail as to what that act was, but it was inappropriate. And, you know, my belief, which is based in Christianity, does not accept that kind of thing in the bedroom, even if it's with your husband. But it, it got me thinking that a lot of times, once again, because someone doesn't know, that can be inflicted on them. And that is a form of abuse. Yeah? So the other th part of it is that I was saying to you earlier on that I, I don't know about sex. I wasn't taught but you know, I know everything about sex. How did I know? The story goes like this. When I was at school and I was educated here, we had to give a letter to our parents or the, the, the um, authorities wrote a letter to your parents to ask them in those days, uh, not unlike now, whether your child, you wanted them to be taught about sex education. And the sex education of that time was we we friend you know amusingly called it learning about the birds and bees, you know, to know what happened. And it was a very biological type lesson, saying, "Oh, the, the sperm comes out, it goes into this, and it nurtures the egg, and the egg produces a baby." It was on that clinical level, unlike what is happening now. Yes, I won't go into detail about that. I think we all know. Okay. So how did I get to know all about that? Because when the lesson was finished, because I would be kept out of the lesson with one or two other children. And of course, when our friends came out, the five-year-old brain or the seven-year-old brain that had received that education would say, come, to, come outside. And we would say, yeah, yeah. So what did you learn? What did they tell you? Yeah. And that was where we got our lesson which as you can see was a bad photocopy of a five-year-old brain because it was their version of it. Now, if you um, listening to me trust that another five-year-old, even a 10-year-old or even a 15-year-old can now teach your child, then please go ahead. That's, that's what will happen. Otherwise, I would suggest that on, it is important for you to take control of what is going into your child because fundamentally you have a responsibility that is placed on you, not just because you are the adult and the parent, but it's placed on you by God to bring up a child that is wholesome, full of wisdom and understanding. Because a lot of the things that um, we're seeing on TV now, you know, the over-sexualization of things, the clothes that our children are wearing, this, that, and the other, are not actually being given to them with an explanation. They're just being encouraged to do that. They're not told the impact. Mm. There is no understanding put into it as to why one should not do something or what will happen if you do something. Apart from the fact of our parents saying, ah, you, you'll get pregnant. They didn't tell the boys they were going to have children that they would have to look after. Nobody ever told the boy, don't do. But they always told the girls, don't do. Do you, do you understand? Does that make sense to you all? Can I see some reactions? Can yeah, you yeah. tell me some reactions? <laughs> I'm, yes, just, I'm just sort of processing it really because... Yeah. Um, um i guess i guess what was going through my mind was yeah the 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 best way to present it to the children right to present the conversation we, we, we are coming we are I, I coming to that yeah i don't get it yeah, because because ultimately um if a child also if if the father or the parent is quite authoritative and very fierce in the house then it, it that doesn't produce um a congenial environment, an and atmosphere for an that. atmosphere to allow absolutely, that. and I'm I'm, co I'm coming back to that too, yeah. because you see, 
you don't know me. And I've come into here and I ask, are there um, single people? Are there married people? Because you see, what I need to see is that there's no shyness here. What I need to see is that you have the ability to relate to me if you don't know me, but on the basis that we are both adults. So therefore we can have an honest conversation. And if you're unable to do that with me, who is being open and saying, I'm ready to talk to you. I've even put my name out there that I'm going to talk to you about sex. Who does that these days as a black woman, single, and you're coming to talk about sex? Are you well? <laughs> do you understand? Because it now looks like I'm the sex expert in Nigeria, B. But do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. We yeah. don't own things properly. You know, just because I'm talking about something doesn't mean I don't have a good value system. My reason for talking about this is because nobody else wants to talk about it. And because it is so important. And because I'm seeing hurt and devastation around me yeah. everywhere from the church through to common day, you know, life. If I tell you what's happening, I'll tell you a story. During the COVID period, there was a lady, firefighting, fire, you know, uh, um, we'll spirit led, you know, <laughs> woman of God. You know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ah. What couldn't she bring down with prayer? She was um, uh, uh, one of those workers, key worker. So she would go to work every day and leave her three children at home. Mm. Two, boy, two girls and one boy. The boy was the eldest. I think he was about 15, probably at that time, 15, 16. And the two girls would have been in the age bracket of maybe about 11 and maybe 13, something like that. These two children, her daughters had started menstruating. And so, of course, as a good mother, she was buying the requirements for that process monthly. And as the times went on during this COVID, um, she would go to work, come back. And then one day she realized, ah, my daughters, you're not using this thing. What has happened? Are you okay? Is everybody well? What has happened? She checked. Both daughters were now pregnant. Is anybody shocked? They were pregnant. How could you be pregnant in COVID time? Where are you two people going? How can you be going anywhere to do such a thing even? She inquired. Who is the father of these two girls' pregnancy? Yeah. Can anyone tell me? Their brother. Their brother. Me. Thank you, Jane. Brother. Yeah. Brother. Yes. That's he was the only one that was seeing them. Oh, they were yeah. stuck in the house. He was a half adult. He's 17. He's going to go through, I mean, like every person, you'll have hormonal changes and things. This is family. why. <laughs> that's, that's, I'm so sorry. That's his family. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, you know, that's like your own bro blood brother and sister, right? It's like, yeah, uh, that's crazy. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. It's crazy, it's but it's not crazy. It's crazy, but it's not crazy. And why I say it's not crazy for it to happen is that, like you said before, who told them anything? Did their mother teach them about sex, the ramifications? Did she tell them who and who you can go with? Information. Information is power. Mm. Because if she had even told her, sat her two girls down and said that, you know what? My dear, if you do this act, now that you're in this critical part of your life, if you, this happens to you, you have sex, you can get pregnant or somebody can rape you, you can get pregnant or you must not let anyone come near you in that way. Don't be tantalized by it. And the 
barriers are you must never sleep with somebody in your family, like your brother, your father, your uncle. Your, do you understand? Missing information. So that if, say, the brother now, because he is the senior person in the house, places pressure on the child, she will call her mom and say, Mommy, do you see what a brother is trying to do? Mommy, brother raped me. Mom, do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, I do. This is the reality of us as Christians not living in reality because we tend to say, God will do it. God will protect my children. I will pray it out and we will do this. It will never happen. <laughs> Things can happen. I am not speaking it into the life of anybody here, but I'm saying, you know, you, you hold God tight with both hands, but you must be aware of what is happening in the world you're in so that you know how to pray. So you know how to act so that it does not happen. Davis, please, I am leaving you to um, pull me back on the God things because I'm just dealing with this on a practical level. So if there's a word of wisdom, there's a biblical verse, please shoot it in at any point. I'm happy. But do you, do you see? So all I'm saying to you is I'm giving you scenarios and then I will come to your question. But I think even before I come to that question, you've already got your answers. Let me tell you another story. Family comes in from West Africa, could come in from the Caribbean, could come in from anywhere. They have a little daughter who's about maybe three, four. They managed to get accommodation. In those days, it was very difficult to get accommodation if you were black, if you were um, uh, Irish. In fact, in the scale of things, Irish, dogs, and then black could get homes. <laughs> you know, they'll say no Irish, no dogs, and then no blacks at the bottom. So even the Irish found it hard. We were all minority groups. Yeah. Nevertheless, they managed to get an accommodation to live in. In this accommodation, there was a family, of, uh, an elderly white family, a white man and his wife. They would, would have been around about in their 70s. So they were retired, not, not doing nothing, just being at home waiting for God. And so as they were there, um, and of course, they're all living in the same house, no no. Uh, should I say no, nothing to stop you from going into another person's house. And often the child might run upstairs and talk to the um, old people and come back down to hers. It was very free. So the uh, couple coming in, you know, uh, in, in those days, they came willingly. In these days, we don't come willingly. <laughs> they came for a better life. Now we're still coming for a better life, but we're Japa. I'll be a Japa, how do you say this word? Everybody's Japa going and <laughs> getting out of the place. <laughs> so they now thought, oh, okay, old couple, what can they do? Oh, please help us look after our little girl, take her to school, bring her home. School is only 100 yards down the road, but you know, we have to go to work. Still the same story today. So they would go to work, come back, and uh, that's it, you know child will be there, they carry on. And this was going on for a while. But what was also happening in the house was that the man, after they had brought this child home, would go upstairs with his, his wife and the child would go into her own part of the house. He would come downstairs and find out, oh, is the little girl okay? And then he would play with her. And what he would do would be that he would, you know, get a like a um, handkerchief and be bouncing it up and down. You know how uh, if it was a cat, the cat would be trying to jump and get the the thing that, like a yo-yo. Hmm? So the girl would be jumping 
and just playing that little game with him. Then after a little while, he would take the handkerchief and put it in his pockets. And in those days, you remember those days, maybe for some of you young people, you will remember, but the trousers started here with braces and, you know, belt and then big pockets. So she would now, of course, put her little hand into the pocket to try and get the handkerchief. He would be sitting down on the step. Does anyone see anything wrong with that? Maybe Does anyone have a, have a visual overactive. maybe happening? <laughs> Say that again, Jane. I might have an overly imaginative uh, mind, but I've already gone places. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. You're, you're not over imaginative at all. You're imagining appropriately. Mm. Now, we thank God nothing happened further than that. But then you see, the parents would come home and mommy would say to her daughter, oh, my darling, how are you? Huh? How was today? And she would say, oh, mommy, it was good. I was playing a game with uncle. Mommy would say, oh, that's good. That's nice. Come and eat. Mm. Mm. Jane, do you see anything wrong with that? Mm. No, no. She should have inquired a bit more about the game. If she knew to. But you see, what had happened here was that she had been floored by two words. Game. Game is supposed to be innocent. Uncle. Because everybody's called uncle. And uncle can't do me harm. And he's old, <laughs> for goodness sake. Why would he be thinking such a thing? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> David, put your imagination away. <laughs> but do you, but do you see mm. what she should really have done is to say, Oh, you played a game. But you see, don't forget as well, she's coming from an environment where these things are unimaginable. That anybody would do that to a child. Am I right? Yeah, and I also guess the fact that the person is an is a, is a much older person, right? It's not something that we we expect people from a certain age, right, to treat the younger ones in a different way. Like they are like kind of precious and you know, it's like next generation. Yeah, so that probably will not cause the woman smile. Like, oh man, you know, like this is this is like the grandfather, right, or something like that. You know, yeah. to ideally be, um, you know. Looking out for their best, especially from from the place from the place where she came from. That's the way it normally work. Normally, yeah. Yes. Sorry, Titi. I see Titi's hand up. Yeah. Hi. Thanks for bringing up this this discussion. But I just wanted to ask a question. Do you think it's she's coming from that place, or do you think it could be <clears throat> one of those things where uh, it's an uncomfortable subject? So even though you might think, Absolutely. oh, that's inappropriate, because, well, the reason why I say that is because when Absolutely. we were younger, when we were younger, um, things would happen and you would try and tell your parents, but the minute they realise where you're going, they would shut you down. Hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're so, so right. Um, David, as you mentioned it earlier on, that position of shame, um, embarrassment, what am I going to do about it? If I start to do something, it gets very big. And then I'm going to um, put a stigma on my child. If you were in the Asian community, you start saying, her, huh, we will not be able to marry this child. Her dowry will not measure up. You know, all these things come into it. So we have church going on. We have our own beliefs going on. We have our own fears going on. We have how we were brought up in the mix. There's about 10 different things just mixed up in our heads concerning it. And that was why I wanted to everyone to have a thought about what do you think about it? What were you brought up doing? And if I am even dangerous in what I'm saying here, I will say that in this audience of people, almost four of you here 
would have had some sort of experience. And I'm not asking you to show me your names, but I'm just saying, if you start to think back what you went through as a child, you will know you had some near misses or some collisions or partial collisions. And it doesn't matter whether you were a girl or a boy. Everybody has had some experience of some sort. Titi, your hand is up. Yeah, because I don't mind saying, I definitely had nemesis. And to be honest with you, so did all my friends. But we weren't allowed to tell anyone. Because when we try to yeah. say it, it's like you just get shut down. That's and, and mm. what that because resulted it, in is, it's, it's a shame, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah, a subject 100%. of shame for who we're it's trying a subject, to tell, though, not it's for a us. subject of secrecy, yeah. yeah, yeah it's exactly. a subject of secrecy, yeah, because the, 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 the person that's assaulting you or near missing you is actually saying to you, don't tell. And you know, you, even in your house, your mother and father don't tell. Mm. They're acting like you don't know what it is. And yet, a lot of our children had already had experiences. Mm. And you've got to build trust. You've got to build that ability to communicate. I mean, how do you expect, you know, we're, we're, we're having this conversation now, but does that mean that tomorrow, hey, my children, come on, sit here. <laughs> Let's talk sex. It's not going to happen. It shouldn't happen. Because you need to go back and examine what kind of relationship do I have with my children? How easy is it for them to ask me for something? Think about your relationship with God. How do you ask him for something? Even to ask him for something, you normally do praise and worship. You cajole him. You, you tell him how wonderful he is. You come before him with gifts, songs of praise. And you know, you try and behave yourself too. As if you're paying for something that he's going to give you. <laughs> So, but you feel you can come to him, but you are behaving in a way that is untrue for your children that can't come to you. So when you're asking me, you know, that question of how, sorry, I just wanted to bring the question back up because I want to call it properly. Or oh, um, Tamar, could you just do the question again for me? Just okay. say it for me. All right. Amen. Kyle, if you're there, you can just share it. Okay, I think I found where. I put <laughs> it. Yeah, sorry, how do you how do you talk sexual education with your children and get them to open up to to me regarding inappropriate advances from adults? You haven't even told them about sex. Then you want them to talk about inappropriate behavior from another adult. How do they report another adult? I mean, I, I've often said, Titi, I've seen your hand. Just let me finish this, this section. I've got to this age where I tend to forget things and get lost. So just hold on. I'll be there with you. You talk to people that you have a relationship with. Do you ever approach someone who will not understand? If you're in trouble, do you approach someone that will not understand your problem or your situation? No. You only approach somebody who would understand where you're coming from or come close to that, who you can open your heart to. Now, just like Titi was saying, this is the thing of shame, you know? And then maybe you, you've been hammering into them that, oh, you must abstain, you must this, you must that. In a very authoritarian way, how do they then come to you? Because they feel that you're gonna beat them maybe or punish them when in actual fact they are not the the person to be punished and a lot of you won't even have the courage you can't even approach your child you won't even have the courage to uh, uh, um, approach the person who has damaged your child or attempted to 
I've been in, you know, um, in, in, I've had the experience where somebody tried to do something to me at home where my father was in the house and I reported it to him, but it was after the person had left because me too, I was afraid to say anything. And I don't know whether he took action or not. He never came back to me on it. Would you be happy enough, courageous enough to approach that person and then come back to your child to tell them what you did about it? That's the kind of relationship you need to have. That is the kind of defense you should have for your child because that is where you're working in the, in the God position for your child. Because you have a responsibility on that side to protect your child, to keep them safe, to give them understanding, to give them all resources to stay alive. And I believe that teaching them about sex is part of keeping them alive. <clears throat> you must build trust and confidence. You must act with love and understanding and have that ability to listen without judgment. If your child has the courage to come to you and says, daddy, mommy, this person did this, you must not jump and start shouting, but sit and say, please tell me more. What happened? What's going on there? Is this the first time? Let's see what we're going to do about this. This is not going to happen to you again. Give them that thing where, you see, because one of the things that children report is that they don't think you're going to believe them because this is a child reporting about an adult, an adult that has jurisdiction over them, possibly power over them. In the story I was saying where a mother hears, oh, we played a game. <laughs> Don't let that sentence walk past you. My darling, what game did you play? Can we play that game? By the time your, your daughter is saying to you, oh, mommy, you can't play that game with me because you haven't got trousers. You know, that's how children talk. They don't, they're not trying to hide anything. You haven't got the trousers. You got so she said, hey, trousers. What type of trousers? Why do I have to have trousers? Time she has described what has happened, you're like, hey, okay. Time to put a closure to this collection of my child from the from the uh, school. Maybe it's time to even leave that third job that I'm doing. But do you do you, do you see? And keep asking the question until there's no more answer. Do not be fooled by the words uncle, auntie. It is not even the first time that a father have not, has raped his child, his own child. It happens. And at times the mother knows because we have this wonderful thing called the sixth sense. But it's just that the thought of it and what we're going to do about it is just too horrendous. You know, we've had occasion. Ah, sorry. Let me go back to you. Titi, you had a question. Please go ahead. So my question is, and I honestly don't know the answer to this. That's why I'm asking. And by the way, my sons are, my sons are grown. They're 23. What age do you have that conversation? Conversation. What age? Conversation yeah. about sex. Yeah, what's the right... You know what? Mm -hmm. As yeah. soon as they can speak. Mm. Because they need to be able to vocalize to you what's happening to them. You know, as a mother, you're tending to wash your child, bathe your child. And in the process, you'd be saying, don't let anyone touch you here. This is all yours. This is private. Yeah? You're teaching them. If, if anyone touch you here, only mommy. If someone touch you here, come and shout. If someone touch you here, come tell mommy. You're training. Do you understand? And the other thing I would say to you is 
call everything by its real name? These two things are called res. It's not a dirty word. It's a real word. Anybody that hears the word breast, they know what it is. Men have them, women have them. Call it what it is. Don't make up TT, PP, Papa. No. Because if something does happen, we need clarity. Your, your case needs to hold water. The child said breast. The child didn't say TT, and now you're, 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 you're sorry about that, TT. <laughs> I'm that's that fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, your child used the word that everybody understands, and he understands, and it's clear. Don't be ashamed of the word. That's what it is. Anything else? The same thing. Call it what it is. I'm just being, you know, careful not to say certain things on the platform. But do you, do you understand? How much detail do you go into? As I said, and this is why I asked the question at the beginning, what's the age of your child? You know your child. You know its level of understanding. Okay, I have a, a, a goddaughter. She's six. Her mother has been talking to her because I've been talking to the mother a lot. And she lives in West Africa. And I, I, because I'm very, very concerned about this area and the way in which young girls suffer. Um, because it has such a huge impact that can just destroy a child's life if they are assaulted in this way, however slight. So um, she said to me that she had a call from the, the child's school one day. And she said, oh, what's happened? What has my child done? So the teacher said that they were phoning to apologize. So she said, ah, what's happened? What's happened? So what had happened was her daughter was in, in the school bus, sitting down to, I, I think, next to another boy, another boy of her own age group. And the boy lifted up his shirt and told her to touch his breast or to touch him here. And she took her hand and slapped him, <laughs> you know, in her defense. And then when they <laughs> arrived at school, of course, the incident, and maybe the boy started crying, it was all a bit of a mess. And then they said to her, what did you do? Why? So she said, he told me to touch him. And my mommy says no. And so I hit him. So they now reported it to the mother. And I said, good. She's learned something. She's learned at a very early age of six not to let anyone uh, uh, encroach on her physically. She may not know all the reasons in detail, Titi, answering your question, but as time goes on, she will get the next level and the next level. My point is that from the earliest possible level, they must know it is not acceptable. They must be able to say no and know that no is a full sentence. They don't need to explain why, because my mom is no, no. That makes Do you sense. Understand? Yeah. Yeah. Then when they get to the next stage of understanding, because even with us and the way that Christ teaches us or God te deals with us, we don't understand everything that Davis tells you all. But with time, with experience, we begin to understand and our level increases. Am I right? So, therefore, mm -hmm. when child grows older, you take it to the next level. They will even come and ask the question themselves. So when they're asking questions, mommy, what's this? Time to start telling them yourself, taking control of that information and teaching them where not to go, why not to go. Oh, and always give the why. Because when I was younger, <laughs> it used to really get on my nerves. My, pa my father would say, oh, I will tell you this in, in, in when you grow older, in due course. And I'm like, even at that age, I was only maybe about 10, 11. I say, daddy, no, tell me now. Because for some reason, I knew that, you know what, I will store the information. And when it became necessary, somehow, boom, the, the, the information will come forward. 
you know a little bit like if you're reading the word you may get into a situation and even if you're not somebody you're somebody like me that doesn't really you know unquote and all this kind of thing somehow your spirits will give you the word of encouragement and as they, as david said you will encourage yourself in the law because you'll encourage yourself with that word it will come it does come it's like the holy spirit assists you so if you put this word into your child i'm telling you you know is that that thing of teach your child you know raise your child as you wish to do you know and by the time it is time they will know it it will be part of their life part of the parcel because really what i'm saying is that you cannot teach abstinence alone without teaching um character without teaching why you need to abstain if that is the way you're going to go and you 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 cannot even teach how to ex to to abstain because you have to give them the how when your body is telling you one thing you know and this boy is toasting you and your brain is in the middle becoming jelly have we not all gone through it ladies in the house gentlemen in the house you mean you haven't toasted anybody lately maybe not lately <laughs> but do you understand what i'm saying Lately, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm I'm real. I'm real here. At least those of you who were not in Christ from the from the womb, you did a few detours. Mm. You know, you tried out a few. You know, something. Some of you, even if you did not, you saw. But I'm just trying to say that it's you know you have to balance everything that you do um i'm just making sure that uh all right do we have any questions do we have any observations do we have any comments or is everybody in shock <laughs> no i think uh what i would just say is that um this is a very, very um, informative and it's very enlightening. Um, it also shows the level of work um, that we have to do. Um, what might be what might be useful is to, uh, because I know we are we almost run out of time, is to is to start talking about the house, right? So if there's a way we can maybe run a workshop at some point for the group to talk about the house and just help people. You know, to help us, um, all of us, to see how we can begin to control the narrative, like you said, you know, to, yes, you know, I, 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 the reason why I'm also bringing this up is because there's some of us was like, this is said, our, our children are already in their 20s, but it doesn't mean they don't need it. Does that make sense? Yeah. It yeah. Doesn't mean that, but, but then you see, the way, the way you talk to a 20-year-old is um from a different standpoint because yeah. a 20 year old especially if they've already been in control of themselves may have already as they say eaten the apple yeah, yeah? so it's now pulling it back and saying okay where do we go from here what has been the benefit what are the ramifications was it worth the while do you know that a lot of our children um from other discussions that I've had, have seen parents in certain positions, have seen parents having sex, let's put it that straight. They know what you do. They hear what you do. They know even where parents are cheating on each other because they're listening to phone calls where the mother or father are talking away, thinking the child cannot work it out, but they know. That creates a lot of distrust, disrespect. When you see your child behaving in certain ways, it may be because of the things they know that you think they don't know. They're getting things off the internet, as you rightly said, uh, Davis, from 
a lot of children are looking at porn now. You need to um, have control as far as you can with the internet and what the content of what your children are receiving because they have the phone, they have the ability to go somewhere else and look for this information. And it's really starting early to teach that that is not how it's meant to be done. Where is the role of sex in a relationship, in a marriage? It is a gift. I mean, it, it is a hard battle that you're, you're waging now because it's so free. In my day, <laughs> many eons ago, you didn't even hold a, boy, a, man, a, a boy's hand. Now, you can... You, you may not hold their hand because you don't need to. You, you're expected to do other levels of, what do they call it? Friends with benefit. And the benefit belongs to the man, usually. So maybe, you know, we're supposed to equally, <laughs> equally teach our children to respect themselves and to respect each other. I know that I've gone on um, I, I don't know. It's too big a subject to sort of finish today, but I hope that I've given a, a teaser um, and I hope that it, it has been useful. You know, the you said here, what is the middle ground? And I don't think there is a, a middle ground. They need to know it all. You need to empower them, empower your children. There is, it's not a case of do you teach safe sex or, or abstinence, as the question went, you teach both with reasoned argument behind it so that they understand why you say, don't put your hand in the fire. You're, you know, th this, sorry, um, Tamar, I had really wanted to cover this because I didn't know whether I was going to come back again. And that was that film. Um, yeah. Davis, I don't know if you could indulge me for yeah, this film could, to be shown. Yeah, just give me. Um, uh, is Kyle still around or is Dropper? No, he is. Um, okay, yeah. uh, let me find. Let me because I think I switch off my WhatsApp because it was just pinging. Yeah. Uh, give me one minute. I'll just let, let me while you're doing that, let me explain why this film must be shown, even if I don't come back here again. <laughs> But we hope you do. It, uh, <laughs> we hope, we hope um, you do come back. <laughs> me, me too. But I just, you know, there's just so much, and I'm just so concerned um, because our male children need to be taught properly about consent and what it means. Does everybody understand that? Because a lot of times our children. The, especially the male, do not know when a woman is saying yes and when they're saying no and what it means. And this film here is about that. Take the analogy, and I almost need to say nothing more, but it was very important for you men in the house, please teach your men, your, your boys well. Otherwise, they will get into situations that they should not get into. You know, uh, the teaching that goes with them is almost slightly different. Sorry. Okay, I'll play now. Yeah, yes, thank you. Thank you. If you're still struggling with consent, just imagine instead of initiating sex, you're making them a cup of tea. You say, hey, would you like a cup of tea? And they go, oh my God, I would love a cup of tea. Thank you. Can you make you know they want a cup of tea? If you say, okay, hey. So what do you say? No, I was, it seemed very large on mine. Can everybody see the whole picture? Yeah, yeah. I can. No. My, my end, I can it's, see everything. I see a big picture, one big person. I don't know if it, there's more to it. That's it. It's just a stick. Would you like here. a cup of tea? And they're like, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. Then you can make them a cup of tea or not, but be aware that they might not drink it. And if they don't drink it, then, and this is the important bit, don't make them drink it. Just because you made it doesn't mean you're entitled to watch them drink it. And if they say, no thank you, then don't make them tea. At all. Just don't make them tea. 
Don't make them drink tea. Don't get annoyed at them for not wanting tea. They just don't want tea, okay? They might say, yes, please, that's kind of you. And then when the tea arrives, they actually don't want the tea at all. Sure, that's kind of annoying as you've gone to all the effort of making the tea, but they remain under no obligation to drink the tea. They did want tea, now they don't. Some people change their mind in the time it takes to boil the kettle, brew the tea and add the milk. And it's okay for people to change their mind, and you are still not entitled to watch them drink it. And if they are unconscious, don't make them tea. Unconscious people don't want tea, and they can't answer the question, do you want tea, because they're unconscious. Okay, maybe they were conscious when you asked them if they wanted tea, and they said yes, but in the time it took you to boil the kettle or brew the tea and add the milk, they are now unconscious. You should just put the tea down, make sure the unconscious person is safe, and this is the important part again, don't make them drink the tea. They said yes then, sure, but unconscious people don't want tea. If someone said yes to tea, started drinking it, and then passed out before they'd finished it, don't keep on pouring it down their throat. Take the tea away. Make sure they are safe, because unconscious people don't want tea. Trust me on this. If someone said yes to tea around your house last Saturday, that doesn't mean they want you to make them tea all the time. They don't want you to come around to their place unexpectedly and make them tea and force them to drink it, going, but you wanted tea last week, or to wake up to find you pouring tea down their throat, going, but you wanted tea last night. If you can understand how completely ludicrous it is to force people to have tea when they don't want tea, and you are able to understand when people don't want tea, then how hard is it to understand when it comes to sex? Whether it's tea or sex, consent is everything. And on that note, I'm going to make myself a cup of tea. You want me to? Uh, okay. Okay. I hope that um, everybody could take the analogy from that. And you will agree that it's a very important aspect. To Can we get the link to the video? I think that's possible. It's, it's on the YouTube anyway, so it's out there for everybody. And I think uh, it will be better for people to see it. Um, but it's it's so important to, in my view, teach your child about sex, the both sides of it. Build character in your child so that they understand the where's and wherefore of everything. Build a relationship with your child so that you can talk to them about anything. They can approach you about anything. And I mean anything. Don't keep that distance from your child because you are the father, you are the mother, you know, and you think that because they can talk to you closely, which you didn't do or couldn't do with your parents, they don't have any respect for you. Not so. It's how you build it. Um, your role is to protect your child in every way. Um, and the, 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 as you know, the, 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 the devil can come in from any angle. Yes. And should it happen that they decide that they're going to go and drink this tea, <laughs> it doesn't make them unworthy because we have all sinned at some point and we will return to Christ. So we as Christians, we know what is right. We try to teach it to our children. We hope that they will take it, that they have a will themselves. And we pray, yours is to stand on the watchtower and continue to pray that they will understand that the Lord will direct them. And anytime, you know, the danger comes, they will run from it. I hope that I've covered as much as I can. Um, I mean, because the thing is that some of the things you teach a, um, a female child are slightly different from what you would teach a male child because the demands from outside are totally different. The peer pressure is totally different. I didn't even get into talking about that. I didn't talk about grooming that can take place and it comes in different, different ways. And please do not feel that your child is totally immune. Do your job. Bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, um, Madam E.K. Um, I want to thank you so, so much for all the things you've shared uh, tonight. Uh, I, learned, I learned so much. <laughs> I 
Yeah, so I want to thank you. <laughs> you did? <laughs> yeah, I learned so, so much. Yeah, I think um, um, we would definitely would love to have a workshop with a parent, um, you know, at some point, maybe in the new year. Um, because the next uh, metamorph, we're doing something about finances and managing your money. Uh, we've got somebody who's coming. But I think in the new year, we need to plan that and see if we can get a workshop done to help all of us as we move forward. You know? So I just want to thank you so much for sharing, for being vulnerable with us tonight, you know, because it's what you, you share your stories. It's, it's vulnerable and all the stories you shared. Uh, some I find quite quite actually <laughs> difficult, to, difficult to comprehend, but, you know. It's, not, it's but, still recovering. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, but I want to thank you very much for, for that. You know, uh, I know this has been something that we've been planning for a long time, but I'm glad that we were able to get it done before the end of the year. Uh, so we will definitely, definitely be asking you to come back uh, because I would love to have a workshop done properly, not just like a one-hour kind of just breakout sessions and stuff like that. Yeah, so I want to thank you. God bless you. So real, 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 real big. All right. So I just want to say a word of prayer for you uh, because our time is gone. Um, Father Lord, I um, pray for EK tonight. Thank you, Father, for the wisdom that you've given her. Thank you for the passion you've laid in our heart to, to help all of us in this area. Lord, I pray, Almighty God, that you expand our territory in the name of Jesus. That you give her a voice to the nations in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh Lord, as many Buddha she 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 will reach with this message this ministry lord i pray that uh, lives will be transformed in the name of jesus christ i pray for our children especially you know uh, i pray for our children right now almighty god are there any one of them or who have who has been either molested or 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 who has had some nasty experiences father we pray oh lord that you are the you're the balm of gilead that you will begin to cause your healing to touch them in the name of jesus christ in the only way that you know how to if you need to bring them into the right kind of circle, the right kind of knowledge, that kind of education. Please, Father, do it. We pray, all of all the parents, all of us here uh, tonight, Lord, that you will teach us, help us, empower us, help us to learn, help us to know what to do, help us to to go out there, oh Lord, and begin to know that it is never too late. Thank you, Almighty God, because you are the healer. Lord, I pray for healing, emotional healing, even tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for healing all over this room in the name of Jesus Christ. And those who might listen to the replay later, I pray for, pray for healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, help us, Almighty God, to know that we don't have all the answers, but we do have all the answers in Christ. Help us to be teachable. Help us to be teachable, to know that we can always learn. We can always do better in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Almighty God, for the help. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you so much. I've seen some messages. I saw some messages coming through. Sorry, I can't respond to them. Um, but thank you. We will, we will definitely come again. <laughs> we'll bring our we'll bring our check. <laughs> yeah, we'll come again. <laughs> yeah, but I just uh, I said I hope it doesn't take another year because I know the first time I, I reached out to you was last year. We're supposed to have you on last year, October, yeah. but we never did that until this year, November. So I'm hoping that we're, it's not going to take another year before we have you on here. Don't, don't worry. I'm, I'm sure it, it will not now. And it's strange. It wasn't even this subject that I was supposed to do last time. So it is timely and it is appropriate and it is well. You know, so it's uh, you know I'm available at any time. My my whole pursuit is to educate us so that we don't have, we don't fall into some of these things. That it's like I feel like sometimes they're being set up. We are being set up, and people are losing their children to the system. Hmm. Um, but I must stop talking. I can talk for England and the world. <laughs> <laughs> so let me stop here. Bye. Bye. Okay, then. All right. I see Arison. I'm saying the right word. Hi, Ekinam. Uh, it's me, Arison. Is that you? Yes. How me. are you? How are you doing? Oh. <laughs> yes, it's me. Long time. Yes. Oh, God long bless time. you. God bless you too. Arison comes through from time to time. You know, it's good to have all, everybody here. So thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Uh, we, we need to close the, close the call now so that people don't stop dropping off. All right, so um, let's share the let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, forever more, surely. Amen. It's a message. All the days of our lives, and we do it in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. Please, next month. 
we're going to be talking about finances, how to master your money. Please invite more people to come. Uh, we're going to be talking about that. We get, we're getting a financial consultant to come in here and just show us how to double your money, master your money, all right, so that um, as we get into the new year, things going to be looking good. All right, so I want to thank you very much for joining. You're blessed and highly favored.